Hi everyone, this is Conzel here. So today I want to bring you guys another math video guide on the emblem of Sabbat Fate. This is the new 2.0 artifact, one of the new 2.0 artifact that was uh, reviewed in the 2.0 official live stream. So I'll probably do another video on the Shiminawa's reminiscence, but we'll talk about that in another video. Today we'll focus solely on the emblem of Sabbat Fate. I think a lot of people when they saw this uh, set bonus, the how it works with the 2 piece giving you 20% energy recharge and the 4 piece increasing your elemental burst damage by 25% of energy recharge. A maximum of 75% bonus damage can be obtained this way, which means 75% times 4, it means that 300% ER energy recharge gives you the maximum 75% bonus damage. This sounds absolutely broken and bonkers, given that nobly set only gives you a 20% burst damage boost, right? But here's the thing. People are thinking that uh, this set makes it such that you can go all out on energy recharge and you'll still do very good damage on burst. Is that really the case? So in this video, I want to share with you guys and let's analyze and see whether or not going 300% ER when using the Emblem of Saber Fate is a trap or is it actually better to go for a medium number and focus on the other stats on your artifacts, yeah? Alright, so now, first off, I want to talk about the this particular set itself in terms of the data mined information it was actually 30% and in fact, you can still see it here on the Honey Hunter. Okay. Or Honey Impact. Basically, you see here it says that increased elemental burst damage by 30% of energy recharge. What this means that is that originally in beta, before I went live, this set, I know the name is different, but this is the same set. Originally it was based on 250% ER to achieve the maximum damage bonus, which is very very nice. This was the one that really makes it worthwhile. But now it's 300%, so is 300% really worth it? Let's look at some math figures on this. And how I will do this structure this video is that since I just did some uh, math on the Kazuha, I did a Kazuha math video, if you have not checked that out, remember to check it. Out, uh, it will be in the description as well in the top right corner. Okay. Now what I have done is that I've actually extended further based on what I've done in the Kazuha math just to look at a crit DPS built Kazuha, how we swap and tweak the ER figures around to see what is the kind of damage that we can do, what are the final stats that we can get. And I have done this for three different permutations. First off is a 454 attack weapon with 61.3% ER at level 90. We also have one with 30.6% ER, 565 attack, which means a higher base attack and lower substat. And we also have one in right in the middle, 45.9% ER and 510 attack. So let's see how it works in terms of the damage figure. I will be using Kazuha's burst damage as a comparison. Uh, not factoring in any of the reactions, that's for sure. No elemental absorption, etc. Just purely the burst damage. So as to have a proper fair comparison. Okay? And of course, I've already factored in the 20% ER provided by using the 4 piece emblem. Alright, now. Uh, of course, I removed the 15% any more damage as well. But basically, this looks very clean because I've already hidden all the other values. This is just the most basic one. So first off, let's talk about if we use a high ER substat weapon with a lower base attack, which is this case, 61.3% ER, 454 attack weapon. So in terms of the artifact permutation, I have done... Uh, these two variations mainly, where we talk about whether or not it's better to use the attack sense or the ER sense. Elemental, obviously, we'll still use the elemental uh, bin stat, whatever element your particular character using the emblem set is. In this case, it's animal since it's Kazuha. And hey, piece to make things easy, I just chose CR. CD is also doable, they are pretty much interchangeable. It's just that when you get if you are using a CD helm, 
whatever rules of CD you need will then be translated to CR instead. You just swap the two, yeah? It's between the CR and CD. Okay, this is just a quick explanation of how this works. If you have seen my previous math, math video, you will find that the format is very familiar in terms of how I structure the mean stat, how I structure the number of possible base rows. Base row meaning your artifact came along with that particular row itself. Okay, or at least it's the very, very first row of it. And then the artifact stats that we need to achieve in order to meet certain stats. And this is the number of upgrades in this particular on this particular substat that you need. Now, let's look at the final stats itself. Okay, if you look at the orange figures here, these are the final stats. What does all this mean? You see here that this has the highest damage. What is this permutation? It is actually T at that sense together with elemental together with hit piece CR why because you are using a weapon with high ER by using a weapon with high ER you don't actually need an ER zen piece sense unless you want 300 ER <laughs> okay so this is the ER from the artifacts uh, anyway this this doesn't just include artifact this will include everything else in terms of like the 20% ER from the burst Okay, but don't worry, the math all works out. I've already double checked it one time. Now, here's the thing. If you look at a 300% ER permutation, which is here, this column here. You know what, let me... Maybe I should freeze this, yeah? Let me just freeze the look so that you guys can see it. What the artifact permutation is like. Now, between this and this, this is pretty much the same. In terms of the artifact means that the difference here is what's the ER that we are gunning for. You notice that with so much ER from the weapon, from the burst, uh, sorry, from the emblem two piece effect, I have so much ER that we can actually uh, just target for 255 ER. You always need to plus 100 because this value here excludes the base 100%. In fact, the total ER is here. So you have 300, 255, and 205. 255 here just assumes that you have four rows of ER, just the row, for just the base row, no upgrades required across all the other artifacts other than or across all the artifacts other than the sense. So that is the gist of it. You will notice that 300% ER gives you the lowest damage. So 300% ER is actually a trap. Why? because you sacrifice too many of your rows into ER. If you look at this section here, when we go for 300% ER, we have to get 8 rows. We have to get 8 rows of ER just so that we can get the 300% ER. And in return, what do we get? We get a 40, 41k damage versus if I had gotten if I had gotten the ER rows into my CR and CD instead which results in a much higher crit damage crit rate I managed to keep it more or less the same in terms of permutation if, I, if this is 60 you will have to sacrifice something else because the, the stats won't be able to make it but always bear in mind that whatever my permutation here is is always based on an average value so if you're lucky with your rows right in terms of like whether or not you get uh, since it's CR, okay. Since it's CR, so it's a it's a range of two point seven percent crit rate to three point nine percent crit rate every time you get a roll on CR. So mine is an average here. This is based on three point three. So maybe if you're lucky, you get something like three, a few three point nines instead, more three point nines than a three point three or two point seven, for example. There's no actual three point three in the game. It's two point seven, three point one, three point five, and three point nine. Okay, I just took an average, but. What I'm trying to say here is the crit rate is more or less the same. Don't be too up to particular about the one CR difference. It's fine. The main difference you'll see here is in the crit damage. Because of this loss of crit damage, you lose damage. You lose so much damage, right? So 300% ER is a trap. That is the gist of it. 300 ER is a trap. 300% ER is a trap. You sacrifice way too many substats on ER 
when you could have been used when you have could have been using CR and CD on them. Okay, so that's the very very first message of this video. 300% percent yeah, is a trap. Now, the second part of this video, what I want to talk about is how you should permutate your ER between using sense ER or at that sense, at that percent sense, and also a high base weapon with low ER or a low base weapon with high ER. How you will permit it? Of course, I know that it's the the per the choice of your weapon. Sometimes also depends on that particular category of the weapon whether it has that specific value that you want, and also the effect as well. Like for example, a fervonius effect is not good when you have such a high ER. You you don't need that fervonius effect, in my opinion. You don't need it. Okay. Unless you are using someone like say Zhongli where the uh, elemental particle generation is bad, then maybe there is some benefit to using for bonus lance. For this lance would be a high base web base attack and low ER weapon. Okay, so anyway, this is just to show if you look at these two columns, if you look at these two columns, you realize that because we are using a high ER side attack weapon. Uh, sorry, a high ER substat on our weapon. We can actually afford not to use a ER sense and use an attack sense instead, and get even more damage than if we had if we would have used a sense ER. I mean, of course, my ER is lower. I'm talking about two five five versus two zero five. But you notice that even with two zero five ER, it's still the highest damage because we are using an attack sense. We have this. We are man We managed to maintain the same CR and CD. As opposed to a two five five ER. Okay, so you should be able to tell what this is in terms of a conclusion. Basically, if you are using a high ER substat weapon, you should use a at that sense. Don't worry, I'll cover the all this in the TLDR session as well. Now let's look next at a high attack but low ER value. Okay. So you notice right away that my ER is lower here. It's not 155, it's 124. Well, how, how I did this is that because we managed to get a 124 and a 155 figure earlier because that's the uh, minimum amount of ER we can get assuming we don't get any upgrades on ER, just base rows. Alright? So there's nothing to sacrifice here. You can't drop this to 100 and get more CRCD. Because you are already on the very very uh, minimum. And voila, here are the figures. You notice that between these two, the. Oh wait, let me freeze the view, yeah? I forgot to freeze the view here. You'll see that this figure here is higher. This one is different, right? When you have a low ER, Using a ER sense, low ER from your uh, from your weapon substat, using a ER sense is actually better than using a attack sense. Why? Because when you use an attack sense, when you're using it together with a low ER weapon, what happens is that you need more rows in your ER, as opposed to someone who's using an ER sense. So your e the rows that went into ER. They did not go into crit damage. They did not go into crit rate, which is why there's a difference in damage. You see here, I try my best to keep the permutation uh, as similar as possible. So what you have here is a 60 CR, 60 CR, 166 crit damage, and 134 crit damage. There's no way to get this to 166 crit damage because we need that amount of rolls into sense to hit the minimum 200% ER. 200% ER. To me, it's a sweet spot, and I'll talk more about why it's a sweet spot. But this is how it looks like with a low ER, high attack weapon. ER sense will win out when you have low ER and high attack. Okay. Yeah, it's there's there's a bit of nice nuance here where it's not always oh attack sense is always the best or ER sense is always the best. It still depends on what weapon you are using. And in fact, certain characters with the uh, substat, ascension substat, 
having ER will also make a difference. Now let's move on to the last simulation, which is a moderate one, a medium one, where the ER is not high, not low, it's medium. The attack is also medium. Okay. So an example of all the three weapons that I've talked about, let me just quickly show you guys. All right. So sacrificial sword, we all know, we are all familiar with this, right? 454 base attack, 61.3% ER. This is an example of a low base attack, high ER weapon. Now, if I go look at, uh, say, Favonius Codex, I have 510 base attack, 445.9 ER. So this is a medium case. And then you have the new craftable catalyst from 2.0 Inazum Inazuma area, where it gives 30.6 ER, which is a low ER value, and a high base attack at 565. Now bear in mind, these are all 4-star weapons, I just did 4-star weapons for easy comparison because not all 5-star weapons across the 5 weapon categories have ER. Alright, so this is how it looks in terms of like the weapons in-game, the kind of substat, in terms of ER and the base, corresponding base attack that it gives. Okay, if you are if you are an expert at Gelishin already, you already know all this. Uh, just for the sake of completeness, I'm showing this. Okay, now let's go back to the stats and the simulation for the medium ER medium base attack. You see here. Ah, okay. Sorry, my bad. I I did a additional permutation earlier today, and I forgot to. Adjust according. Give me a moment. Okay, sorry, there's something wrong in my Excel, so I kind of have no choice. Let me just. Okay, I got it fixed. So basically, after tweaking the or correcting the figures, what you have here is you see that even with even with a medium weapon. Okay, medium attack, medium ER weapon, and attack sense, you still have the highest damage output on the elemental burst versus if you use a ER sense. Why? Because the mid, this is in the scenario where the medium value of the ER from the weapon is enough to compensate such that you do not need a high number of ER rolls. In this case, we only need two ER rolls. So 2 ER rolls only sacrifices a little bit of crit damage such that uh, still able to give a good or rather a higher burst damage with a higher attack. Because with the attack sense, we have a higher attack. You see here it's 1.9 versus 1.5. Alright. So this is uh, what I have been talking about. Basically, let's go into the TLDR now. Alright, I don't want the video to go on too long. I had wanted this video to go between below 20 minutes, so yeah, I have to go really fast now. Okay, first off, let's talk about the TLDR, right? Basically, first conclusion is going for 300% ER is a trap. You will result in a DPS loss due to all the CRCD stats that are sacrificed. You know what, let me move the screen a little so it's better representation. I'll move this as well. Right. So, sweet spot is about 200 to 235%, or in some cases, 255%. So, let me just correct this. Let's make it 255. So, sweet spot to me is somewhere, it's 200 to 255% ER, depending on your other sources of ER. So, example, weapon substack, character extraction stat, Venti or Mona. In particular, these are the two characters with ER now. Mona is a special case though, because she gets 20%. Uh, she gets hydro damage based on 20% of her ER. So I'll probably do a separate video regarding uh, Mona and the Emblem of Severed Feet. The second key note or the key point from the TLDR is if your weapon's ER substat is low, 30.6% 30 at 1119 for the weapon, ER sense is better. If your weapon's ER substat is mid or high, either 45.9 or 61.3%, at that sense is better. Okay. But what this also means is that let's say if you are using it on say Venti or Mona, if you want to use the four people on them, obviously the using a slow substat with their character essential stat, you might be better off using it at that sense. 
But again, like I said, Mulan is a special case, so we'll talk about that in a separate video. But generally speaking, for all other characters who do not have EI as their character ascension stat, which is pretty much all the characters other than Venti and Mona, correct me if I'm wrong. If you guys know of any other character with EI ascension stat, do let me know. Alright? Generally speaking, this is the TLDR for weapons ER stat. Low ER substat use ER sense. Mid or high ER substat use attack sense. So how then do we achieve 300% ER without DPS loss? Electro Traveler. Electro Traveler may possibly provide 20 to 240% ER depending on one, whether A, whether the amulets can stack. It's about 240% with sacrificial sword if the uh, amulets can stack. Because we don't know right now whether or not it can stack. Not until the game 2.0 is out. That's number one. Number two, whether or not the 10% bonus from Traveler's ER can contribute to the ambulance set effect. Because this is like a percentage of percentage, which if you saw the previous developer notes, they already explained that this is the reason why Sucrose EM buff does not contribute to Kazuha's elemental damage. So what this means is that if this follows the same rule as the Sucrose EM buff to Kazuha's elemental damage, Traveler will only be providing 20% or rather 25% or 20% which is about 5% to the 4-piece emblem set effect. Although Traveler will give you 40% ER, for example if you build 200% ER on your Traveler, you still be able to get 40% ER but the 40% ER does not contribute fully to your 4-piece set where 25% of the energy recharge equal burst damage increase. This this is how the this is basically how the percentage of percentage works. Okay. So this again requires testing when uh, Inazuma is out. I hope that it will still be 40%, so that it's easier to calculate. 40% it means, simply means that Traveler will give you a straight 10% burst damage bonus if you are using an emblem set on your other character that is, that is using the Ambler set. So check out my Electro Guide, Traveler Guide video for more info. I'll put it in the description and also in the top right corner, yeah? On top of that, other Inazuma characters may also provide ER buff as well, since that seems to be a new meta direction. Wherever you see well, how the Traveler is built, right? It's a very good indication of how the Archon would be like. But I know that there's leak saying that the Archon is like cooldown reduction, right? So, can you imagine if the Alcon is good on reaction, Traveler is giving you ER and you combine the two of them together, it's going to be burst spamming meta. That's why I say there seems to be a new meta direction about spamming burst rather than using auto attacks. It's all about spamming burst. Also not about one shot burst damage, it's about spamming burst. So anyway, uh, we'll know more when 2.0 is out and when more of the Inazuma characters are out. But as of now, the best way to do, to, to build your artifacts, to design your artifacts, is to aim for 200% ER, your total stats. Try to get ER from the rest of the characters instead, buffing you, giving you ER. Because 300% ER, you cause, you sacrifice too much CR CD. Alright, so there has been the simple TR, TLDR and a simple mathematical um, permutation and comparison of whether or not how, whether or not 300% ER is a trap with the ambulance of Savored Fat, Fate set and at what, how much ER you should aim for whether you should use ER sense or attack sense and whether or not there's a additional chance to go beyond that in terms of the ER value so anyway, I hope this video has been helpful to you guys if you like the content, remember like the video and click subscribe for more yeah? thanks for watching, bye